second part of my video series about Tori Deal's journey on the challenge. The first video of the series was my first video ever on YouTube. I discovered the challenge only recently and I fell in love with the show. I started watching every season I can find and then I watched season 30 and I really liked Tori Deal. I found her journey of going from just a rookie to a serious regular to finding love and getting engaged to Jordan to be really special and it's the reason why I started this channel. I love Tori Deal. I mean, I spent 40 minutes literally fangirling over her. In part 1, I went through her history from her start on the popular dating show Are You The One, all the way to the challenge Total Madness. I feel like you kinda have to watch the first video to get the whole picture of this series. Especially since I was a hardcore fan of her and now I'm not sure if I like her, as you can probably tell from the title of this video. Anyways, I put a lot of work in that video and the seasons I covered are some of the best in challenge history. I mean, it doesn't get any better than Dirty 30 or War of the Wolves 2. Conniving and cunning players we could find, but above all, the most downright dirty. <laughs> That being said, I'd like to welcome everybody to the challenge, Dirty 30. Part 1. Where is Jordan? When we last left Dory, she was a fan favorite, liked by everyone and especially me. She had successfully established herself as a great competitor after making it to two finals. Tori was also pretty funny, she was goofy, charming and fans seemed to love her. She was always the underdog and her and Jordan made a truly unstoppable team. Hashtag Team Jordy all the way. Not sure if that was ever a thing, but anyways, they were a power couple. Things would completely change though when Tori would join the cast for season 36 of the challenge, known as Double Agents, once again competing for the prize money of $1 million. Fans began to notice something was wrong when Tori joined the cast without Jordan. This was a massive red flag, especially since we last saw them just last season. They were engaged and appeared to be extremely happy together, but more on that later. Double Agents has a lot of twists and turns. In order to better understand Tori's journey on this season, I thought it would be best to start by explaining the format of Double Agents. It can get a little bit messy, but I tried my best to narrow it down to three key points. First, Season 36 carries on with the twist of the rat's call, which I had covered in my earlier video. Similar to the previous seasons, players will have to earn a rat's call by way of winning an elimination in order to secure a place in the final. This effectively means that players cannot hide behind strategy. Everyone has to go down and win an elimination in order to have a chance of running the final. I'm done with people skating by. I'm done people just going under the radar this season the only way to make it into a final is to win an elimination Secondly, this season would be played in teams formed by one male and one female contestant. Players will be allowed to pick their own teammates in the first episode of the show. However, this will not be the final teams, as players are allowed to infiltrate other teams and steal their partners. This was such a fun twist and will be very important to us in this video. Lastly, two teams will be voted in for elimination every week. One team will be chosen by the house after public discussion followed by a secret vote, and the second team will be chosen by the duo that wins the daily challenge. The winners of the daily challenge can either volunteer themselves for elimination in order to get a chance to earn a red skull, or vote in another team instead. At the start of the season, Tori would be in a team with fellow castmate Cory, and things are looking really good already, as they are both challenge vets, and Cory at this point of his career has competed in 7 seasons in total, and is in a great physical shape. Moreover, he managed to reach the final in the previous season, and while he didn't win, he did come in in 3rd place, which was not bad at all. Plus, he's really cute. This season had a lot of Big Brother players, so naturally alliances started to form. There were two major alliances. First, the Big Brother alliance, which had Casey, Amber B, Messi Fessy, and the extremely annoying and kinda unstable Josh. And then there was the Rookie Girl alliance, which includes Amber B, Big T, Gabby, and Amber M. Corey and Tori would cruise through to the third episode of the season, avoiding elimination and securing their place in the house by making alliances with their fellow castmates. Tori was aligned with fellow vet Anissa and her partner Fessy, as well as Josh. So basically she was working with Big Brother, while Corey had a close friendship with Fessy and Nelson. All in all, they were sitting in a pretty good spot. Wes, on the other hand, was not doing so 
good. He quickly became the number one target for Anissa and Fessy, who dominated the first two daily challenges. Wes, recognizing that he is in danger of being voted in for elimination, approaches Fessy's alliance, which is formed of Fessy, Nelson, and Corey, and proceeds to make a pitch for them to work together instead of against each other. And honestly, guys, I'm tired of guests and I just want to work for you. I'm just asking for a job. Make me the janitor at the bottom of this thing. I always wanted to have a job. Literally, I've never had a job. Nelson, that smart people sometimes do, they hire a CEO. Do you want me to be the janitor? You guys want to. Yeah, went from convincing us to let him be, be the janitor, janitor to, to saying, if you want to be the job, I will do it. Just let me know. This speech had me giggling by the time that Wes stopped talking, and I was convinced to hire him, with benefits and everything, probably even give him a promotion. But sadly though, this was not the case for Fessy and his alliance members, who would vote him in against his number one this season, Devin. During the elimination, Wes would lose to Devin and go home. Now I know what you're thinking, this video is meant to be about Tori, so why are we talking about Wes and Devin? Well, because Devin, after winning, would steal Tori as a partner, and in my opinion, this marks the point where Tori would have her fall from grace, Devin would completely wreck her game in one smooth move. Corey and her were working great together. They were both strong physical competitors, and even more importantly, they were aligned with the same people. There was zero conflict between them, and as a result, they made a great team. But Tori and Devin, on the other hand, had nothing but problems. It was really funny watching them fight every five minutes, considering what happens later in this video. Their problems and the subsequent fall of Tori all started because of one single player, Josh. I have to talk about how much I disliked Josh this season. His actions make me think of him as a big baby trapped in an adult's body. How that man one big brother is beyond me. When CT and Casey end up bickering over using the microwave, Josh decides to interfere and confront CT about making her cry, which was a total lie. Casey, unlike Josh, is an actual mature adult and was not crying over a silly argument. This, however, would lead to CT feeling bad and he tries to apologize to the unbothered Casey. He then goes on to confront Josh about lying, interfering, and creating problems out of nothing. This whole thing would explode into a huge argument, where Josh acts like a man-child and embarrasses himself on national television. Honestly, I just wish that they would stop casting Josh at this point. Just please, someone get him off of my screen. Get off my screen, you satanic unholy being. Josh is in his late 20s and is a literal millionaire, but watch how easily he gets triggered and lose control when Devin gets involved in the argument and says this one single line. Big brother sucks! Nice. You're screaming over me! Big... Tuck it! Tuck it! Tuck it! Oh, it's eight times nine! Alright, what the f*** up? What the f*** up? What the f*** up? You think I'm bitch? You think I'm bitch? Hey, hey, Stop, 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 dude, stop, stop, please, please calm down, please calm down, gosh, please. I honestly cannot stand him. I don't understand why he didn't get kicked off of the show when he started acting all tough and threatening violence against Devon. This was so frustrating but kinda hilarious to watch. Alright, back to Tori who is in a team with Devin. The pair struggle to work together as they are part of opposing alliances. Tori's working with Josh while Devin understandably hates the Big Brother alliance, and especially Josh. This leads to Tori openly expressing her dislike for Devin, while Devin feels like he has a snake for a partner. I think it's safe to say that they are not working well together at this point. Despite being completely dysfunctional, they somehow manage to win the daily challenge, giving them all the power for this week. You might think that that was a good thing for their team, except it wasn't, it really wasn't, it was the opposite of good. Tori, not wanting to waste this opportunity, wants to volunteer herself for elimination to earn her red skull and secure her place in the final. Ideally, she would like to go in against one of the rookie girls, believing them to be weak and calling them layups, often to their face, which is very rude. I don't care if it's Gabby, if it's Amber M, if it's Amber B, I don't give a I just want it to be a rookie. I hate that all of these weak players are teaming up with some of these strong players and they're trying to get out other strong players. I respect you as a competitor, yeah. but if you're going around telling people I'm weak and you're not telling me, I take that as you being I didn't get respect because I walked in here and I was a little bit bigger. I had to earn that. So I'm not saying that it's not possible being a little girl and props to you. They are playing such a messy game. Like, what the f are we doing? Seriously, like, what are we doing? <laughs> oh, messy, messy. 
She feels like a victory against them is all but guaranteed. Moreover, she specifically would like the house to vote Amber M or as she calls her, Small Amber. This is the first time I started kinda hating Tori's attitude. This is a completely new and nasty side of her. Her ego is massive this season, and the way her and Anissa talk about the other girls in the house was beyond rude and unnecessary. It made their scenes kinda hard to watch. I remember watching her rookie season, Dirty 30, and none of the vet girls treated her like that. Sure, it's an unspoken rule, or well, it's very much spoken, that the rookies go first into an elimination to prove themselves and earn their stripes and blah blah blah. But Tori didn't have to go around calling everyone weak and lay up and I don't know what else. I just felt like it was really unnecessary and it came off really disrespectful to me. Anyways, the house puts in Amber M and her partner Nelson, which makes Tori very happy, especially since it's a hall brawl. I mean, this is exactly what she's been waiting for, a physical elimination against Amber M. But being tied to Devin as a partner complicates things. Not knowing whether it's a girl's or guy's elimination day, Devin is worried about going in since he already has a red skull at this point, which he got after beating Wes. Dory compromises with Devin and votes in Fessy instead? Wait, what's happening? I'm confused. Why Fessy? This was not part of the plan. Let me explain. Messy Fessy, in an absolutely self-serving move, asks Tori to vote him in, as the elimination is a physical one and he is confident that he can win. I mean, I can't imagine anyone being able to stop Fessy coming in at them at full speed without breaking an arm or worse. The guy is huge. There is only one problem with Fessy's and Tori's plan. Fessy and Nelson are working together, and not only that, but they have a close friendship inside and outside of the game. In asking Tori to send him in, he knows well that he will be sending Nelson home, which is so shady. Even more shady is that Tori is doing him a favor by sending him down. I can't lie, I was really angry at Tori for this move. I didn't understand why she would be helping Fessy when he literally sent Jordan home, her fiancé, last season. I don't know about you, but I would be holding more of a grudge, for sure. Anyhow, this of course leaves Nelson, Corey, and me feeling very betrayed by Fessy. I played this game with my heart. A lot of people tried to tell me, can I trust him? I said, Fessy would never say my name. He would never go against me. This dude's already got 50 pounds on Nelson. But on top of that, you want to play dirty? Fessy, there's no more dirty play, man. I was thinking, is Fessy really doing this? Is this really happening? It sucks that I had to lose a friend tonight. I honestly hated watching this elimination. I kept rooting for Nelson to win, but I knew he wouldn't. He gives it his all, and as if I couldn't hate Fessy more, he plays dirty when he sees Nelson making progress, ripping off his face mask and even rubbing dirt in his eyes. Big Brother players on the challenge are always horrible. I don't think I ever liked a single one of them. I mean, I hate Josh. I hate Fessy, and I really don't like Casey. At the end of the day, Fessy wins, earning his red skull, and he celebrates by dumping Anissa as a partner. Yep, more reasons to hate on Fessy, I guess. He dumps the woman that helped him win two daily challenges, for Casey. In the following episode, Fessy is public enemy number one, as he should be. He faces backlash from Corey, who doesn't want anything to do with him, and Anissa, who feels betrayed by him for choosing another partner. And Tori's not doing much better, as she had the choice to stand in Josh, who wanted to go in, but she chose to side with Fessy instead. This leads to a massive argument in the house, and Tori's position in the game is really rocky. This is a good point to talk about what's going on between Fessy and Tori. Anissa, Corey, and other castmates would continuously make remarks about how close the pair seemed to be, with Fessy even admitting that he has a crush on her and that they have a special bond. I mean, ew. All of this was happening while Tori is engaged to Jordan and has a seemingly committed, happy relationship with him. Or at least, that's what I thought when I was watching the previous seasons. Meanwhile, the alliance formed by the rookie girls severely dislikes Tori and Anissa, due to the continuous rude remarks made by them, especially with Tori going around the house and calling everyone weak and a layup every chance she gets. Big T emerges as the leader of the alliance and formulates a plan to put up Tori and her huge ego against her closest ally in the house, Anissa. The biggest supporter of this plan happens to be none other than Tori's own partner, Devin, who can't wait for her to go home so he can get a new partner. Honestly, everyone seemed to be against Tori at this point, and I can't exactly blame them. In part 1 of the series, I openly talk about how much I love Tori, because she was always the underdog, especially with her going against Kara Maria and Polly. 
that made me root for her. But the story is different. Ironically, she had become what she hated most, Cara Maria from War of the Worlds 2. She was too confident in herself, she was rude and believed that she deserved to win. It's kinda disturbing to see how both women would go from being fan favorites to villains in such a short period of time. Also, they always seem to be pitted against each other. It's always Cara Maria vs Tori Deal. They are both strong, confident women. I love them both as competitors, but I have issues with them and how they handle themselves. Anyways, back to double agents. When Big T and her partner CT win a daily challenge, it gives them the perfect opportunity to execute their plan. Side note, the relationship between CT and Big T deserves its own video, as I somehow both adore and hate their team up at the same time. Anyhow, Anissa and her partner get voted in for elimination by the house, and then Tori is blindsided by Big T to go in against her. Everything is going according to the plan, all is left is for Tori to go home. And she does. Although feeling torn about competing against her best friend Anissa, Tori is confident that she can beat her and earn her rest call. However, in an ironic turn of events, Tori performs horribly. She is unable to even get started with the elimination, as she just can't seem to get the crate to tip over to free the balls which are needed for her to complete the challenge. This gives Anissa a massive head start and leads her to the win, ending Tori's season in yet another early elimination. As Tori exits the game, so does a lot of my admiration for her. That being said, I'll be giving her the same grace I gave Cara Maria when reviewing War of the Worlds 2, because it's important to remember that this is a reality TV series after all, and it doesn't accurately represent the true picture of who these players are in real life. At the reunion show, Sneaky T, I mean Big T, expressed how much she didn't like how Tori disrespected the girls who were smaller than her in size by calling them weak and constantly underestimating them. Furthermore, she explained that her and the other girls in the house felt disregarded by Tori and Anissa. Amber M would go on to call Tori and Anissa mean girls, and I kinda see where she's coming from. She would add, however, that Tori did apologize to her in her DMs after the show aired, but she wasn't happy with this apology, stating that it wasn't enough. But like, that left me confused, like at least she apologized to you, what else is she meant to do? I don't know, I feel like it was, it's human decency to apologize to someone in the face if you really want to apologize. But I live in New Jersey. During the most interesting part of the reunion, it was revealed that Tori and Fessy had a vacation together. When asked about it, Tori explained that after coming home from filming this season of the challenge, she and Jordan broke up and she was looking for a way to distract herself from the breakup, which is how she ended up on a vacation with Fessy. I recently got single and so, I mean, my life was crazy. I don't think people understand like what I was going through that season personally was a lot more than anybody knows. She states, however, that they are just friends and nothing much happened between them. This moment would come back and haunt her for the next few months. This woman who was just in Turks, like busting it open with Fessy, like drinking all the pina coladas on the, you know, on the beach. Um, but I never cheated on Jordan, and I handled the breakup very poorly. Do you regret that hookup? No, oh, it was the worst decision of my life. Part 2. The Breakup the news of Tori's and Jordan's breakup was treated very casually on the reunion episode, which drove me to do some investigating to see what really happened. The couple met in 2017 while filming the challenge, fell in love during season 30, and got engaged after two years of being together. But in November 2020, everything would come crashing down for the couple. Jordan and Tori would have two different ways of coping with all the attention their breakup seemed to generate. Jordan would step back and take time to work on himself while Tori seemed to spiral out of control, or at least she did in my opinion. She was doing too many interviews, I didn't feel like she gave herself enough time to really process what happened. Initially, both Jordan and Tori came out with statements that suggested that the couple simply grew apart, but that they had nothing but love for each other and everything was amicable between them. Jordan would post a video on his YouTube channel where he can be quoted saying, We had this discussion before she left the house. Let's agree we're not gonna do interviews about this. We're going to make a statement when we are good and ready because we do owe that to the fans. And then that's it. Jordan would go on to say that Tori's response to this was, We're gonna show the world how to break up maturely, which is why he was shocked when Tori appeared on the podcast of Two Chicks in the Office and went into details of their relationship and their breakup. 
When asked about why she decided to go on the challenge season 36 alone, Tori would reveal that her and Jordan have been struggling in their relationship for a long time and that they had actually broken up several times before, but she asked him to stay and work things out. Me and Jordan were really on the rocks for a lot longer than people know. Yeah. And we had broken up before the challenge for a little bit. And it was kind of like, I really, really begged him to stay with me. She believed that taking a break from each other while she filmed Double Agents would be a good thing for their relationship. However, soon after she came back home, the pair would break up for good. Things got even messier when Jemmy, who is another competitor of the challenge and a close friend of Jordan's, actually uploaded a video on her Patreon discussing the couple's relationship and making all kinds of accusations, including things like Jordan had to pay Tori $5,000 just to leave the house and that Tori cheated on Jordan with Fessy. This drove a lot of fans to believe that Tori cheated on her fiance, and even worse, that she did it with Messy Fessy. In fact, this rumor is still believed to this day and is responsible for a lot of the hate that Tori gets. Despite both Tori and Jordan denying it, the accusations made by Jemmy would go on to force both Tori and Jordan to come out with their own videos to clear things up. In her video, Tori would explain that her and Jordan shared a house together, and while Jordan owned the house, Tori was the one who bought all the expensive furniture. So when the pair broke up, both of them agreed that Jordan would keep the furniture, but pay Tori $3,000 for it, which makes sense. Tori, however, continued to receive a lot of backlash from fans, who were led to believe that she cheated on Jordan, forcing her to even release screenshots of private text messages between her and Jordan in order to disprove these claims and defend her public image. In these messages, we can see Tori saying, I'd really like to clear the air on the timeline of everything. It's one thing to be disliked for the fussy shit after, but Jordan, I didn't cheat on you. And it's not fair that the opinion is very much out there and it seems to be co-signed by you. I'll wait for your response back from Jemmy, but I hope you understand why I want to set the story straight. Jordan would text her back saying, I absolutely understand. And for the record, I agree with the amount and timing you're referring to. And I explicitly told Jem and anyone else that you didn't cheat. It was just all very badly timed. Now, I'm not very familiar with Jemmy, I'll be honest, but this is such a shady move to make. And to be making money off of your friend's breakup? That's definitely not okay. Tori would go on to deny that she ever cheated on Jordan until this day, and that the trip with Fessy happened after they had already been broken up, but that she regrets how she handled the breakup and that hooking up with Fessy so soon after definitely ruined any chances of them maintaining a friendly relationship post-breakup. I mean, I wish the Fessy thing didn't happen. On the reunion, they aired pictures of us in Turks and Caicos, and Fessy's my friend, but it just created so much more drama than needed to happen. But, uh, you guys can think, wow, Tori handled that really shitty. I get that. I don't, I'm not proud of that. I'm not proud of those moments that I've had, um, but I never cheated on Jordan, and I handled the breakup very poorly, and it's what cost us our friendship. I think that Jordan and I could have had a great friendship going forward, but because I was just like, handling it so poorly. In fact, it was obvious that their breakup was anything but amicable. Things got so petty between them that when Jordan posted an Instagram picture of himself holding a mug, Tori would leave a comment saying that that's my mug. This would lead to her and Jordan going back and forth in his comment section on Instagram, with him finally saying, ain't nothing in that house is yours anymore. You made your bed, followed by keep your drama off of my page. Much like the beginning of their relationship and their engagement, which were all very public, their breakup would be public too. This left the fans feeling divided, and Tori was receiving a lot of backlash and criticism, and things would only get worse for her. I was really sad finding all of this. I really like Tori and Jordan as a couple, and I honestly thought they were gonna make it all the way. But evident from their breakup and everything that would be happening in the coming seasons of the challenge, their relationship had a lot of problems that us, the viewers, just didn't see. All in all, season 36 was bad for Tori Deal. Prior to the season, she was adored by the fans. All the negative publicity which was brought on by her very public breakup was made worse by her entitled attitude throughout this season. Whether she intended it or not, she did come off as a mean girl, which made it very hard for me to like her. There is a difference between being confident in your physical abilities 
and condescending to everyone else. I have no doubt that Tori could have taken Amber M in any physical elimination, but that doesn't mean that you can go around belittling her and calling her small Amber to her face and on national television. Um, I know I was pretty harsh on Tori during this part, but please consider watching part 1 to understand my disappointment in her during this season. I honestly loved her, and I still do. The breakup with Jordan was obviously devastating for her, and she talks openly about struggling with her mental health post breakup, which I give her a lot of credit for. That can't be easy for her and I'm positive that a lot of women can relate to her situation. But that being said, things would only get worse from here. 